It's Ashley and I am back with another video today and I am going to talk about all things printers. So wish me luck. Um, you're probably tuning in because maybe you're a fellow candle maker and you're trying to figure out how to label your own product or maybe you're in a different industry and you're just trying to figure out how in the world to print good quality labels at home. Now, if you haven't watched my other video, I'm gonna link it here for you guys because it basically tells you what I do 90% of the time, which is I print my labels through Avery. I found out really quickly it wasn't worth the heartache, the time, the stress, the me yelling at my computer and printer um, and scaring my dogs <laughs> because that's really what ended up happening. So yeah, I do a heavily saturated black label as you can see here for my candles, it's kind of glossy. And so I get these done through Avery because with one, all that black ink, it was not coming out professional like they were able to do it, no matter which printer I use. So just disclaimer, I get most of mine done through Avery, but I have started to work on customizing labels for certain clients of mine. This one's actually burning, doing a test burn today, but this was a label that I printed at home that I'll be talking about. So this was a custom one that I designed and it was just kind of like a test one. So a smaller version over here. Ignore my little testing label tag so I know what the hell I'm burning. Return it home safely. Real quick shout out to Phineas. Phineas got a little sis. I haven't named it yet. So if you guys have any name ideas, please let me know. I digress. We are back. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about different types of printers. I'm going to talk about your options with each of them from a beginner standpoint without overwhelming you. And I'm going to tell you exactly which printers I use and what my end results have been for printing custom labels at home. So I need you guys to know I am not a printer expert. Um, this is just basically my own research that I did. I looked at what some other people were using that they shared in YouTube videos, did my research, you know, went down a deep dark rabbit hole of Amazon reviews and ended up with my own. Um, I have a laser printer over here and I have an inkjet printer right down here. So we're gonna get into both of those. Again, I'll share all of that at the end of the video on my personal experience. Two types of printers we need to know about, inkjet and laser. I don't really know much more than these basic facts about both of them. I've had this inkjet printer forever. I bought it for $99 from like Target or Amazon. I don't even know the difference anymore. And that thing is a badass bitch. Let me tell you, I have hated printers ever since I had printers for years. I used to work from home in a corporate setting and they would send me printers and they were absolute garbage. Like it just felt like after three print jobs, something would go haywire, the ink would dry up or something terrible. I was always like cleaning nozzle heads. It was awful. I got this babe and she is amazing. I'm gonna share about a bit more at the end of the video. I'll link it below as well. This thing does everything that I needed to in regards to just black and white printing. I am like very OCD about conserving all <laughs> inks. So I try to print everything black and white. And if it's something big, then that's like a big splurge for me because ink gets expensive. But this is an inkjet printer that I have here. And inkjets, I'm looking at my notes. You do have to buy ink cartridges for them. They are great for color. So you can print, print like a heavily saturated color, like photos and things like that on inkjets. Those are recommended. And they are a bit slower when compared to printing from laser. So if you have like a really big print job. It sounds so weird to say print job. It sounds like naughty. I don't get it. Anyway, I digress. Brain focus. Um, if you have a really like large thing to print, just give it some time because it's a little bit slower unless you have a laser printer. So laser printers, I keep pointing. I don't think it's in the shot, but it's boop right over there. Let's see. Boop. Boop. <laughs> laser printers. So laser printers are really good because they print a bit crisper which is interesting because then when I was looking at inkjet, it said that they're better for like printing high color saturation, things like that. So I don't really know, but this is just like what some blog said that's like one versus the other. And it said that they're crisper. I bought the laser printer because I wanted to be crisper and because I wanted to do foil printing, which I'll get to that later on. Laser printers, they need toner, which is a lot more expensive, but it's supposed to last for longer than the ink cartridges. I went ahead and when I bought my print, my laser printer, it's an HP. I think I spent about $300, $400, somewhere in there. And then I had to spend like $120 worth of toner. 
Now again, it's supposed to last longer, but if I fill up in my ink cartridges for my inkjet, this is becoming to be a tongue twister, I think I spend about like $70 in ink for that. So it was like half. Well, I'm not good at math, but it felt like half. So those are the two comparisons between them. Um, since I only have this one, I get all of my labels if I'm printing them at home from Avery. I'm just a creature of habit and they have all the sizes that I need and they haven't done me wrong so far, so I just keep going this way. There's also a third type of printer out there that I've seen a lot of the groups um, for Create and Cultivate or Candle Makers or my marketing business. In those groups that I follow on Facebook, they've talked a lot about, well, what about thermal printers? So thermal printers are literally a heat transfer, thermal. So it has to have a specific type of label. I actually just printed this one off. This is what I use for shipping labels. Um, you can do things like Rolo or, I don't know the words, uh, Dynamo I think is another one. Um, thermal printers don't have any ink that they need, but the thing is, is that they react to heat. So if you're slapping one of these babies on a candle, you can't actually use a thermal printer for candles. But these things are amazing because you can get really, really creative on different ways that you can print stickers or marketing materials on these labels to use for your shipping and packages beyond just shipping labels. That's a whole other video, but I wanted to share that with you guys. I love this printer. So I literally have one of each now. You would think I'm hoarding printers instead of making candles, but I promise it all comes together at the end. So the next question that I wanted to go through now that we've learned kind of the differences in printers is I wanted to share a little bit about how I personally use these labels that I either make through Avery or make from home. Like I said, I have a black label with white lettering, and so those I automatically ship to Avery. I use a glossy finish on them, and they come back so quickly and perfectly every single time. Um, I've had one issue with Avery where they were kind of off print, off center. I started a chat with them online and within a day they had a new replacement order already in the mail to me. I find that if you buy anywhere between like, I think it's like, 128 and up you can usually get your labels for about 30 cents and under um, I think these specifically I bought them and I get my they have my cents on them so each one is different each order but I think I get like 128 each time and honestly it's worked like such a dream now my warning labels I actually print these at home on my inkjet so with these just because they're only black ink it just felt easier um, what I use is an Avery, I think one and a half inch. And I use matte on this because if you do glossy through inkjet, either I don't have patience or it simply doesn't work, it smears. So I don't know if I just need to like make them sit longer and settle longer and cure longer. I have no idea. But either way, I ended up using matte for these because I don't have patience. I know I'm jumping around a lot, but stick with me, guys. So for the other labels that I print at home, I got the laser because I wanted to make a travel tin with a glossy label because I feel like the glossy finish on these matte vessels just works a lot better. It just gives it a little pop. So these I've actually been printing on my laser printer. Um, and again, they're white with black and they come out really well. Now, something that I do want to tell you guys is if you ever print something and it looks pixelated, Go back and try and change the DPI, I believe it is, or in your printer settings to be a bit higher. And that means that there's going to be more pixels within your printing, and that means it's going to be more crisp. The other trick that I was, I don't even know how I stumbled upon this. I think I just like found it on a blog or something because I was having issues with things still looking pixelated, even though my DPI was really high. Um, is printing your file as a PDF and not a PNG. I know it doesn't work for everyone, but since I've decided to make a video like this, I've shared it with a couple of people online and they have come back and said that printing a PDF file for my labels has made a world of difference. So no matter what guys, pro tip, PDF. So here's the rundown. My inkjet works really well for anything that is on a matte label. My laser works really well for anything that's on a glossy label. 
And then another layer of this is I decided that I wanted to start making custom labels like I showed you guys here earlier. This one is actually a waterproof label that I was testing. But if you wanted to print your own labels at home and then foil them, meaning that you put a foil lettering on top, a foil paper, I think is the official name. <laughs> Doesn't feel official. You layer that on top, and what that does is you put it through a heat transfer, and you can actually have foiled labels, but you have to have a laser printer in order to do that. If you're not quite sure about that process or want more information, leave me a note in the comments below, and I'll make a different video for how to foil your labels, because obviously I don't have an example here, and you're probably like, Ashley, what the hell are you talking about? If you're printing anything waterproof label, matte label, inkjet works great. If you're going for glossy or foil labels, you need to do the laser. You like how I'm like still constantly pointing to things that are out of the frame that you can't even see? Okay, so the moment you guys have been waiting for, I'm gonna share with you guys the exact models that I use, and I'll give you all of the Avery label information that you possibly could need. If you need to get your own, um, and while you're buying it, if you just want to put in the notes that like Ashley is wonderful and sent me to purchase this thing and maybe I'll get like picked up for some affiliate links and things like that to get you guys discounts. I'm totally kidding, but also kind of not kidding. So excuse my mess here, but this is the inkjet printer that I've had for a really long time and I'm absolutely in love with. It's an HP NV 5055 and it takes inkjets, um, cartridges, it's a scanner, copier, it does all of the things connect to my computer really easily. And again, this is where I print my matte stickers, like my warning labels. I can also print the waterproof labels on this one. This is my HP, this is brand new. See, it still has like the stickies on it. <laughs> does anybody else keep those on there because they're totally OCD? Maybe that's just me. Um, so this one is a Color Laser Jet Pro MFP M182 Northwest. It has the paper cartridges here below. It's very noisy, but does really well. And again, this one is for my glossy, also can print waterproof. And then if I'm gonna do any foil labeling, which is an extra step, another video, I will do that on this printer. And so far it's worked pretty good. I really have not explored a ton of it, obviously, because I still have the sticky tape on it. But so far, so good. It's gotten the custom labels done that I needed it to. And we're going, I'm going on a couple months now. So I haven't had any complaints. There are some reviews out there that have terrible complaints, but you know, you can't please everyone. <laughs> so a little bit about Avery labels, and I wish I was sponsored by them because at this point, I'm literally like a collector of all things that they offer. But with these labels, I, I found that you know, obviously each vessel needs a different size label or each product if you're not a candle maker. But I've also noticed that there's a lot of differences between glossy, waterproof, matte, all of the things. So I just wanted to share with you guys. So glossy is going to have this like kind of shine to it. These are the ones that smear through an inkjet, but don't smear through my laser printer. This is my experience. Yours could be totally different. The other label that I have is waterproof. So waterproof, I would consider to be a matte type of label. So that doesn't really have the shine. It is nice and it has like a nice coating on it, obviously to be waterproof. I don't love these, but I just had them so I made them for a custom label. These print fine on my inkjet or my laser printer. Totally fine either way. Then carefully set the candle down. Okay, so the last one that I wanted to share with you guys is the matte finish. So these don't have as much shine. You can tell and these just are kind of like a a thicker piece of paper if you will like just a piece of paper copy paper with adhesive on the back um, these work really well they just don't pop on my candles so again these are the ones that I use for my warning labels at the bottom I am certain that there are a million different types of labels but I'm just staying in my lane here on the experiences that I've had to share with you guys what I know is tried and true and working. So that was a lot of information. Thank you so much for bearing with me. I was kind of ping-ponging all over the place, but I'm not an expert of printers, but I just see so many questions and I wanted to just share my experience to let you guys know that there are clear differences out there. So if you kind of get an idea of what type of labels you want, then you can start to whittle down what kind of printer that you're gonna need. But honestly, at the end of the day, you guys, unless it's a custom label, 
I'm going through Avery just because of the heartache and the supplies and the alignments and everything like that leading up to it. It's just not worth it. I do also want to let you guys know that I design all of my own labels through Canva. So that's kind of where I have that layout and design happen. I take that PDF, I take it over to Avery, and then I design everything from there. And whether I'm printing at home or through Avery themselves, hopefully that helps you guys. Labels and printing and all of the things. It's a lot. I don't drink, but it makes me want to have a drink. <laughs> it's a lot of work. As always, guys, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. If you're a fellow candle maker and want to join the Candle Collective for consulting, mentorship, or just a smaller group of candle makers to collaborate with, please check it out below. If you're here and you need some more kind of like one-on-one -on -one attention, what I even call business therapy, no matter what industry you're in, you can contact me with that information below. I offer 30 for 30s and you come at me with all the questions that you have and I answer as many as I can in 30 minutes. Thanks so much, you guys. I appreciate all of you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Hey, everybody. <laughs> You can't actually use a thermal printer. <laughs> God.